Hey, Oddings, it's your Ate Sapphire. Stick around later in the episode to hear a special offer from one of our sponsors, Thread Up. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? In 1970, a young woman named Donna was turning 28, and for her birthday, her mother gave her a seemingly harmless Raggedy Ann doll that she purchased from a secondhand store. Both Donna and her roommate Angie were nurses, and so they were out of the house most of the time, leaving the doll in the apartment alone. They didn't think much of their new roommate until strange things started happening. One night, after a long shift, Donna came home to find the doll sitting on her bed in her closed bedroom which would have been perfectly fine if that's where Donna had left her. Other nights, Donna would find the doll sitting on the couch with her legs crossed and arms folded, or standing upright in the kitchen. Both Donna and Angie were rational young women and believed there had to be a reasonable explanation for this. Maybe they were just remembering things wrong. But Lou, Angie's fiance, thought otherwise. He did not trust that doll one bit and wanted them to get rid of it or at least consult a medium to see if there truly was something inside it. But Donna and Angie didn't believe that was possible, so they carried on as usual. Then, they began finding handwritten notes around the house. They were written in pencil, in childlike handwriting, on pieces of parchment, a type of paper that no one in the house owned. They read, Help us. One night, Donna came home and found a mysterious red liquid on the doll's hands and chest. It looks like blood, but it was coming from the doll itself. That was the push that Donna and Angie needed to come to terms with the fact that there was something wrong with this doll. They brought in a medium and performed a seance. A long time ago, the medium said, before this apartment complex was built, there was a field on this property. And it was here that the body of seven-year-old Annabelle Higgins was found. And it is in this doll that her spirit now lives. She trusts you and just wants to be around you. Donna and Angie felt sorry for Annabelle and decided to let her stay in the apartment with them. Lou was not happy about that. One night, it was just Lou and Angie in the apartment packing up for a road trip they were leaving on in the morning. Lou was walking to the kitchen and past Donna's room and heard shuffling coming from inside. Donna wasn't home, so who could it be? Lou threw the door open. There was nobody there. Nobody human, at least. He walked inside and saw Annabelle, sitting in the corner of the room. As he walked towards her, he got the burning feeling as though someone were standing behind him. He whipped around to find nobody. He turned back to Annabelle and felt burning again, but this time, on his chest. He lifted his shirt to find seven distinct scratch marks singed into his skin. The following morning, they called a priest, who then called Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned demonologists. This doll is not possessed, Lorraine told Donna. Demons only possess humans. This entity was using this doll to manipulate you, moving it around the house so you would pay attention to it, then tricking a medium into telling you that it was the spirit of a harmless young girl. So, what does it want? Your soul. A priest performed an exorcism on the apartment and the Warrens took Annabelle home with them in a bag. Knowing what this entity was capable of, they made sure to avoid the highways on their way home, since Annabelle would no doubt try to sabotage their drive. And they were right. Along the way, the car's engine continuously stalled. So, is Annabelle truly dangerous? Or is all of this an elaborate hoax? If you're the type who needs to see to believe, you can actually visit Annabelle at the Occult Museum, a section of the Warren's Connecticut home where they store haunted relics collected from the many cases they worked on. She's kept locked in a box with multiple warnings. One skeptical visitor made the fatal mistake of mocking the doll, tapping her glass case and daring her to do her worst on him. When he left for home, he got into a terrible motorcycle accident and died three hours later. Whether or not the Warrens created that story as a cautionary tale, would you really want to test it? So I personally love ThreadUp for multiple reasons. Uh, one, I just, I love shopping secondhand because you get to find really unique pieces. And if I'm being completely honest, the clothes that get the most compliments for me are the ones that I buy secondhand. So it's like, 
why pay more money, right? And you're also helping the environment because fashion is actually the second most polluting industry in the world. So when I opened my shipment, I was actually incredibly impressed by the quality of all the items I got. Honestly, like you wouldn't be able to tell that these items were used. And that's because ThreadUp hand inspects and triple checks all of the items to make sure that they're in the best condition. Finding the items online was super easy. You can filter it by your size and style that you're looking for. There's so many items on the store because it is the world's largest online consignment store. So you are guaranteed to find something that you'll love. And I got all of these items for like more than 90% off of their retail price. I saved like over $300, which is awesome. ThreadUp is giving some of these scary listeners a limited time offer of an extra 30% off your first order. Visit threadup.com slash SS. That's ThreadUp with no A. Terms apply. Layla had always been somewhat of an outcast at school. Because of her thin frame and gaunt features, kids were afraid of her. But there were four girls in particular who loved to pick on her. Christina, Emma, Jessica, and Jasmine. They would call her Demon Girl. Freak. She looks like a witch. Careful, she might put a spell on you. When Layla told a teacher about this, the girls cornered her during lunch period and beat her up. <laughs> Layla and her family had just moved to a new house. Unfortunately, it wasn't far enough for Layla to switch schools. But the move did excite her because there was a creepy graveyard nearby and rumor had it that there was a black wooden hut where a witch lived. So one night, she decided to visit the hut alone. Led by nothing more than the light from her cell phone, she walked down the rocky path in the graveyard and stood before the small, cobweb-covered hut. There were no lights or sounds coming from inside. Layla reached for the door and pushed it open. Everything was covered in spider webs and dust. It looked like no one had stepped foot in there for decades. Layla walked around inside the small dark shack in fascination, but couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't completely alone. Then something caught her eye. On the table was a pocket watch. It was the only thing in the shack that wasn't completely covered in dust. It didn't look like it worked anymore though. It only had one hand, which pointed at 12. Still, Layla thought it was beautiful and interesting, so she put it in her pocket and went back home. The next morning, Layla got ready for school like every other day. But when she went downstairs to eat breakfast, her mom shot her a confused look. Did you dye your hair? No. Well, something's different. Layla ignored her mom's comment and ate her breakfast. When she went to the bathroom after her meal, she caught her reflection. Her mom was right. Her hair was darker. Her hair used to be a light brown, but now it was almost black. And over the next month, her hair got even darker and her skin even paler. Her eyes were almost black as well. And then came the shadow. Every now and then in the corner of her eye, Layla would see someone watching her. But when she turned to look at it, it'd be gone. And every night she would dream that she was watching herself sleep. Like she was watching from someone else's point of view. One day at school, Layla was trying to get to her classroom without one of her bullies noticing, but failed. Christina headed straight for her and immediately began throwing rude words in her face and shoving her. As Christina walked away to her next class, Layla muttered under her breath, I wish she would be out of my life forever. She pulled out the pocket watch and rubbed the engravings. Looking at the watch always made her feel calmer. Layla was both relieved and surprised when none of the girls came near her the rest of the day. The next day, Christina didn't show up to school. Rumor had it that her parents had last minute decided to move back to Shanghai. What an amazing coincidence, Layla thought. She pulled out her pocket watch and noticed something odd. The cover was flipped open and the hand was now pointing at one. The next day, Jessica was in a terrible car crash on her way to school and ended up in a coma. Then Jasmine had gone missing. These girls had always given Layla trouble, but she never wished this on them. She threw the pocket watch in the trash, but it just reappeared in her pocket. Eventually, anyone who had ever given Layla a hard time had something unpleasant happen to them. The hands now pointed at 11. You're a demon, Layla. 
I don't know what you're doing, but it needs to stop. Do you understand? I have put up with you and your awful friends for years, and you dare to ask mercy of me? I wish you were dead. The next day, Emma was found in the woods near her home. She was devoured by a pack of wolves. When Layla heard the news, she knew things had gone way too far. She had to destroy that pocket watch. That night, she went back to the graveyard near her house, to the hut. She threw the watch back on the table and ran back home. And the very next day, Jessica awoke from her coma. Jasmine had been found and reunited with her family. Even Layla's hair and skin were returning to their original colors. The curse was broken, and things were back the way they were. Well, maybe not quite. Everyone at school was talking about how Layla somehow put a curse on those who wronged her, and no one dared mess with her again. When Brooklyn was about three years old, she was diagnosed with a very serious heart problem. The doctors were always in a panic, horrified that her death would come any day. Brooklyn would constantly overhear nurses talking about how worried they were about a little girl. She thought that they might have been talking about her, but Brooklyn's mom calmed her down and reminded her that there were lots of patients in the hospital. Though it didn't help that whenever her nurse came into her room, her eyes were red and wet, like she had just been crying. It always made Brooklyn nervous. What was wrong? The night before Brooklyn was to undergo surgery, she asked her nurse, you're always crying when you come in my room. Why? The nurse froze. She slowly bent down and whispered in her ear, You, you will understand, understand when you, you see her. her. At the time, Brooklyn didn't know what that meant. The surgery was a success, and Brooklyn now had a new heart. Being a young girl, she couldn't quite yet grasp the gravity of what she had gone through. It didn't even cross her mind to wonder where this new heart had come from. She was just happy to be alive and well. Before she left the hospital, her nurse gave her a small stuffed bear and told her to take good care of it. Years had passed and Brooklyn was now about eight years old. She loved to draw and would sketch cute and happy characters like Winnie the Pooh and Dora the Explorer. But one day while she was drawing, she heard a voice. It wasn't malevolent or scary, but rather calm and peaceful. It makes me happy when you make art. It was faint but Brooklyn knew that the voice was coming from the bear. She knew how crazy it sounded, but there was no doubt in her mind that there was a spirit living inside of it that wanted to be her friend. Her name was Rosalita, and she would talk to Brooklyn all the time, and Brooklyn would talk back. The problem was that no one else could hear Rosalita. Brooklyn's parents became concerned that their daughter was always locking herself in her room and talking to herself. But Brooklyn didn't care. Rosalita had become her friend. Brooklyn continued to draw pictures for her to make her happy. And Brooklyn believes that Rosalita helped her become a better artist. Rosalita would guide Brooklyn's hand on the paper. It was like she was a part of her. But Rosalita became tired of the childish drawings. You need to make real art, she said. She told Brooklyn to walk outside into the yard where she found the bones of a dead mouse. Turn it into art, Rosalita said. Bring meaning to its death. So Brooklyn took the bones and glued them on a piece of paper with Rosalita instructing her each step of the way. She hung it on her wall and to this day, it's still there. It always made her parents uncomfortable so they would always try and take it down. But whenever they would take it down, they would get sick the next day and Brooklyn would hang it back up. Did Rosalita have something to do with that? For the most part, Rosalita was always sweet and kind, but there was something odd that happened a few times that concerned Brooklyn. When their first family dog died suddenly, Brooklyn was heartbroken. Rosalita, however, was the opposite. Now we can spend more time together. And in the span of a few weeks, her other family members' dogs unexplainably passed away. Did Rosalita have anything to do with that? Brooklyn is now 19 years old and still speaks to the stuffed bear that hosts Rosalita's spirit. Do you remember the nurse who gave this bear to you? Yes, I do. She was my mom. 
She was always crying because I wasn't doing well. I was staying in the same hospital as you. Did anyone ever tell you where your new heart came from? No. You are my art. Your life brought meaning to my death. Brooklyn began to cry. Thank you so much. You're so important to me. But, Rosalita continued, on your 21st birthday, I have to go. What do you mean? I have to move on. Oh, why? Rosalita paused. I just have to go. And I'm bringing my heart with me. Does that mean that I'll... Rosalita didn't say another word and wouldn't answer Brooklyn whenever she brought it up again. What did Rosalita mean by that? Guess she'll find out in two years. Thank you to all of our patrons. If you'd like to join our VIP program, visit patreon.com snarled. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time. Sweet dreams.